Hello everyone and welcome back to my art channel. I am super 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 excited to show you guys this illustration. I was working on it last weekend and I've just been itching to show you uh, because I've been wanting to do children's books illustrations for a while and I'm now finally starting to build up a full portfolio to be able to do it professionally. That's my goal in the whole scene of things. So um, today I'm showing you the speed paint of an illustration that I did and I'm calling it uh, the wild child princess or savannah and I don't know I just had so much fun with this and um, yeah instead of just giving you one character drawing I'm giving you one character plus 16 animals I did not actually uh, stop to count how many animals I've put in the drawing before I was finished with the line art and I don't regret it one bit I love drawing animals and that's most the whole point of this illustration was to show like how I draw animals and uh, so I hope you guys like it and yeah enjoy so uh, first I just want to apologize if I sound a little bit quiet I just randomly got a migraine and it's really annoying because I'm so excited to show you the video and I decided to do today which is the last day I can actually do a voiceover so yeah I'm sorry if I'm a little bit tired but I'm going to get through this anyway and we're gonna talk a little bit about um, starting artwork just doing it and a little bit of some tricks with the coloring as well which we're gonna get to later in the video um so to start off i just want to say that there is some things that i've cut out uh, from the footage because it's about six hours or seven or eight i don't remember um live footage uh so i had to cut out some stuff to keep it not too sped up and still within the 10 minute mark. Uh, I don't like posting up too long videos because I know for myself at least my attention span is not that long so I usually skip to the end unless the person has something interesting to send, say. Um, but yeah, if there was something that you wanted to see that I've cut out, I'm sorry. Um, I've tried to keep it, kept, I've kept in the most interesting parts at least. So let's get into the topics for this video. Um, there was two things that crossed my mind when I was doing this illustration that I think is an important thing to talk about and that is one, when you're stalling and you have a lot of excuses for not doing a drawing and two, when drawings are actually turning out exactly <laughs> how you imagined it in your heads. Um, so the first thing is, of course, the stalling and excuses for not doing an illustration. I've had it t tons of times, like even the big projects that I had like planned before, I've been afraid of doing it because I'm afraid that, um, well, it's not going to turn out the way I want it to, I want to do it on paper, I don't know, I have a lot of excuses and I'm sure you guys have too when you have like illustrations you want to do, but um, there's no really no excuse like for this one I wanted I had the sketch and I wanted to do it on paper for some reason but in my heart I knew that doing it on paper yes it might look cool but uh, I'm not that like comfortable with doing it traditionally uh, at least like a big big illustration like this so I'm like why don't I just do it digitally and I'm making kind of look traditional and that's what I did in the end and it's all about just doing it and just finishing it and that I've talked about this before that finish not perfect and finishing is better than never doing it so even like just do it and then later you can change it or you can do it again and I've said this so many times so I'm sorry I just have to say it again there's no excuse for doing a, a drawing that you're really really excited about uh, another thing that actually happened with this drawing like I was stalling for like two weeks before I actually started like refining up my sketch and <laughs> when I finally did it um, it turned out exactly how I imagined it in my head and honestly I think as artists that's why we draw because there's so much pain and so much annoyance with drawing because some like half of the time like 90% of the time you draw a drawing it will not turn out how you imagine it and you'll be like super annoyed and annoyed and like, angry and then those like 10% like 1% I don't know <laughs> it turns out how you imagine it and you love it, it's that rush of just happiness and excitement and you're just like so excited and that's what happened with me on this one because I had this clear image of the drawing and it happened um, so that's why you guys are seeing the product of me stopping to say like excuses to myself and then finally actually doing exactly what I wanted and I didn't even need to do traditional 
because I am a digital artist, I'm sorry. I do love traditional, but I don't think I can achieve exactly what I want with traditional. Um, and that's actually the same for other people who have the opposite problem, who says that, well, I want to do this drawing digitally because in my head it will be look better, but you don't always need to do things traditional, or well, digital. Like, you have to stop like saying like, oh, I need this kind of pencil, this kind of quality paper or anything like that. Just try it. Like, you can do it one time at least with the cheap stuff you have. And then later, if it didn't turn out the way you want it, then, then you can buy the more expensive stuff. You, you will never know if it actually will work before you try it. So please, if you have like an idea in your head that you really want to do, I'm saying to you right now, sit down, pause my video, you don't have to finish it, and just draw it, just try it. Like on paper, on digital, like you don't need Photoshop, you can do any like cheap program as well, you don't need a, like Cintiq either, you can just do like a normal tablet. And I don't know, I feel like there's so many drawings that get lost because we don't dare doing it because we're afraid that we will fail. But the whole thing is that the only way we can get to that point where we actually love what we're doing, like I did with this one, is to just dare to fail. So dare to fail, guys. Just if you have a good idea, do it now. Like if you don't do it, someone else gonna do it. <laughs> so please do it. And then if you do it, show me. I want to see. If you guys want ever want to show me any drawings, please just leave that in the comment section, and I would love to check it out. Oh, that was a lot of talking. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about some technical stuff that's going on in the picture right now. And that is actually how I'm separating the silhouettes by value and color. So I'm, you can see a lot of the times I'm kind of clicking off and off a uh, uh, black and white filter to just see how it looks um, in values and not in colors and the whole point of this is like I'm not giving all the animals like a really thick outline just because I know that if I give them different values that is contrasting against each other that they will stand out they will look like the animals they're supposed to without the line art um, and especially you will see at one point with the pangolin especially can you see that it's brown right now and I will turn the part around the lion's legs quite brown very soon so it won't stand out as much and what I did actually was to mask around the pangolin um, that's a little scaled creature by the way if you don't want know what the pangolin is and I turned down the saturation and that then contra contrasted with the very saturated brown um, so when you are doing a piece, try to avoid putting a lot of white lines around your work. To me, that often, very often, um, just gets very, very distracting. Um, so instead of trying to separate your character from the background, please try to tweak the values, or that's like the grey, <laughs> or the colour, or anything else than white. If it's like really really bad, like you can't really separate it, then you can add some white but be very like picky about how much you put in because if you put in a lot, it will get dizzying. Like all... <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm talking too much. <laughs> if you have... I don't know, it's hard to explain. If you have like a black and white piece and you put like the brightest spot, which is white, at one point, your eyes will look at that point the first like that will, will be the focal point um so when you put white gel pen all over your piece the focal point is suddenly nowhere um so that's what i did with her as well like you can see around savannah the princess that is very bright and that's actually the brightest spot in the whole illustration is her because then the first thing that you see when you look at her or this illustration is her which is the whole point <laughs> and I've not used white um, like unless in the eyes uh, I've just used contrasting values so remember that when you're drawing as well try to separate things by values and not white lines um so yeah that was a little tips for this video I hope you liked it I'm sorry I'm kind of my grammar is all over the place uh, I hope you guys <laughs> understood me or oh, oh, okay 
Um, other than that, uh, if you want to know the inspiration for this piece, it's a lot of like um, as a young as a kid, I really liked um, like the wild child stories, like Tarzan and Mowgli. So I wanted to do one with the princess, and then I decided to make Savannah or yeah, the wild child princess, because I really wanted to be a wild child when I was younger, run around in the forest and have all these animal friends. And I just thought it would be really cool uh, to have kind of a wild princess that talks to animals and not just pretty ones. And also, if you're wondering why she's not wearing anything on her upper body, it's because I don't believe that a kid would choose to wear anything on the upper body, uh, just because I wouldn't. Why would you? Um, so I thought I'd just leave it like that, because she would be as free as possible and just have something around her legs. Um, and I hope you guys like the little design that I did for her. Uh, but yeah guys, that is it for this uh, week. I hope you guys really enjoyed this illustration because I really really loved it. And the next coming weeks I will still be working on my children's book illustration portfolio. So there will be a lot more of these big, big illustrations and I hope you guys will enjoy that. If you enjoyed this illustration as much as I did, please leave it a like, um, I really appreciate that. If you want to ask me anything, please leave a comment and if you want to see more of these kinds of videos, you can subscribe. I do videos every Friday and sometimes I do more as well, um, depending on how I feel, but at least once a week. Um, but yeah guys, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and do a lot of fun stuff and finally do that project that you really wanted to do <laughs> but haven't done yet. Uh, so start on that and I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye!